Welcome to another episode of the Focus Me Show. Today I'm here with Adela Mehish Janish. Adela is a speaker, mentor, and female tech leader. Adela is also the vice president of Female Leaders Network. Thank you so much for joining the show today, Adela. Thank you, Katie, for having me. It's a great pleasure to talk to you once again and uh, of course to your viewers and listeners. Yeah. A, a few years ago you uh, left Bosnia, like seven years ago I believe, to move to Vienna and you started your career from scratch in Austria. Can you tell us a bit more what you put in place to help you settle in a new country, new culture and do everything from zero? Uh, so I did many things well and many things that I could have uh, Im improved and I'm, I'm learning along the way. Uh, but one of the things, uh, it was um, that we made a decision. I think that's, that's the, the most powerful uh, decision that you can take apart from, of course, uh, uh, getting in touch with people in Austria or reading about all how to find an apartment, how much does it cost the rent, how much do you need, how much money do you need to cover your costs, and so on and so forth. Uh, so these are the technicalities and, and the logistics um, that everyone can check it out. But what we did, it's it's this idea that we move out and that we move that we go abroad was with us for at least five years so with my husband and myself so we were always thinking about yeah we should go maybe during the studies maybe after the studies but it was like always kind of postponed because we we felt okay we uh, we want to give it another chance in in bosnia so we we both of us graduated uh, in bosnia and and our families are there and our friends and we thought okay let's give it another try let's try with another job because uh we felt both of us that we are not um, that we are not growing, so that we are not really uh, at our level, and that we have so much uh, more to achieve. And we, of course, wanted to see the world abroad because you know Bosnia has been uh, has a dif difficult history behind, and there's been so many um, days or months where we thought, okay, I would like to travel abroad, but I can't because I'm not in the European Union, and then just everything falls apart and you feel very much isolated and as a young person um professionals you want to go out you want to go and, and see the rest of the world so basically i think that the, the most important decision uh so what what we made was basically said now it's the time so now we really want to we really want to go and we give ourselves basically uh six to nine months uh to find the job so i think the, the idea was um uh, when we packed our stuff and uh, uh, came here so then it was this this um, thread basically so now we are here and now we have to make something out of it it's not like okay i'll come here for a month or two and then you know we'll see and maybe if it works out then great if it doesn't work out then we always we go back so basically it was like closing one chapter and starting another chapter with full power so there was not basically looking uh looking back and say oh why we did this and and of course we had the you know at the beginning um there was so much new so much new uh, to explore and we started just by you know learning the language because it's so important uh, to know the language at least some of it because everything around you is in German so if you go to the supermarket it's in German if you go to the uh, Magistrat so if you go to the uh, to pick up any documents what you need to do at the beginning or to do the rent so everything is in German so we started basically with that so we at uh, the moment we settled here we started with the German classes and the second thing that we did we just started uh, asking our friends if they know anyone uh, that lives here in, in Vienna or uh, works or studies it doesn't matter we just said okay we just want to start talking to people uh, and start exploring to see okay what how does it look like how does the job market look like so what are the companies looking after are there any free services basically that you can go and uh, they can check your CV or they can help you uh, prepare for the interview or you can ask tons of questions so basically at the beginning was the, the first three months it was just uh, spending most of the time out out of the apartment uh, either classes or meeting people afterwards uh, for, for any kind of advice. And uh, um, between 
uh, September and October. So uh, it was German classes. After that, it was mostly focusing on a job because we had our savings basically that we took with us and we said, okay, we really need, uh, we really need to make it out in six to nine months. Uh, and uh, then it was like a really big push on looking for a job, applying. And uh, I think the good thing that I did, I would say uh, with, I didn't send hundreds of applications. Uh, so uh, just, you know, sending out where there's like five chance of five percent chance of, uh, of probability so i sat uh, with myself basically and thought okay so with my uh, years of experience few years of experience uh with my degree and the level of of german and so what would be the best chance so what would be the best uh, to, for me what would be the best the companies to uh, to apply and at which level because i could you know randomly send to the a senior level or like for people that they look for five years experience and that would be of course uh, land in the uh, spam or whatever because it's it just doesn't fit and i i am up to you know challenge but it, there has to be a good understanding because people will think okay she didn't read the requirements or she doesn't understand or probably is lack of the whatever expertise or the language and so on or maybe she just sent it out to hundreds of companies and then it leaves bad impression uh, so basically I ran through the the job market and then found a little uh, a niche basically a niche that I that could be really good for me and in Austria they have this kind of trainee program uh, trainee program is uh, is basically for people for the graduates like uh, people who just uh, finish their studies and uh, they want to start in, in an international mostly international which is really good when you get an international environment and so you have the opportunities to explore the whole group like i did at tele2 and uh, basically what helped is that following that path so not going to uh, you know like okay five years of experience or just randomly sending sending the application because i like the company for instance or i can identify myself with the mission but it was finding that little niche at the beginning that where i could get the you know, foot to the door enter the company and then from there i said okay i from there i'm sure i can grow because it's it, it, it will be up to me. There will be so many things that are up to me. So I can, you know, I will, I'm ready to put the effort and I'm, I'm up to the challenge. So I just need to get the job, sign the contract, get my uh, working visa here for both of us. And then from there, I, I can take it. And that's how, how it, it worked out, basically. So places that I applied, I, uh, I received immediate response and I had I, I got the job in, in a week. So basically from the first to the second interview, it was less than a week. They just called me after the interview. So yeah, you need to start with us. So I think, um, yeah, it's good if you're moving to a different, if you're moving abroad without the job, uh, uh, without the community, and you set, you set yourself up to, I don't know, six to nine months. I think it's good to uh, do some research I would say, and identify where could you basically provide the value and what is your niche? Because people will ask you anywhere. So for instance, if you meet friends for a coffee, you come, when we moved here, the first question that people will ask you, where do you want to work? So what do you want to do? So uh, what experience do you have? So you will be confronted basically with these questions anywhere you go, because people will say, okay, I want to help you. I can you know, recommend you, but I need to know this. I need to need, need to know these questions. So this is for sure for uh, really really helpful if you can if you can do that. And from there, it it's, it went really really fast uh, because as I said, it was a really really good environment, which is important. Uh, a really an environment in an international environment in a company that was uh, very open-minded, very flexible. Uh, they were looking for new ideas, young people. And uh, shortly I moved into the area of uh, Internet of Things, digitalization, machine to machine. And from there, so it went even faster, basically, where I had, you know, I, I could use all of my uh, all of my skills in a way. So this uh, meeting new people, uh, part setting partnership, collaboration, uh, learn new, new things and, and grow in that area because it was very relatively new area. 
and everybody, every company uh, uh, was looking at uh, how to work with it. And I was there as a consultant where I could provide lots of value. Basically, I could bring all these pieces together and connect the puzzle. Yeah. Nice. I loved what you said at the beginning about how you wanted to move because you felt you wanted to grow exponentially or learn more and fulfill your potential. And I think that's a fantastic reason to move on top of learning new cultures. And then you shared some precious insights into learning the language, the field that you fit in, and then yeah. applying for a job that's in a niche that suits you. Because once you have a job of network and the language, then you can feel at home. And all of this really resonates with me given that I recently moved to Sweden and before this I also lived in Spain so I could really see myself in all the different aspects you mentioned. To come to your favorite topics or one of your favorite topics on networking, how did you manage to build your network once you had your job in place and a few friends? It's always hard, especially in times like these, to have new friends, new colleagues, new people in our lives. So what active steps did you take to build your network? I think uh, so it all started basically when I get, got my first job. So and, and my, my first job here was as well related to uh, I was customer facing. So I was always out there meeting new, new, new people. And, and from there, you always, you know, basically you start adding these people on LinkedIn. That's that's the, the, the first thing first thing you do. And uh, with some of these people, you, um, when you feel like, okay, I really want to go, go deeper, then you explore uh, deeper connections and then you go further and, and you stay friends and so on. So but basically it's, it started very much with uh, me. Uh, that was in my, my, my job, meeting people uh, regularly, every day, new people, new companies. So I would just basically add, started adding them on, on my uh, LinkedIn profile and, and, and staying in touch. Uh, staying in touch can be in different ways. It can be providing the, the content, basically uh, posting on, on LinkedIn, different ideas, insights, experience, stories, and so on. So it doesn't have to be like you are in a, in a sense that every day I have to contact, you know, hundreds of people. So there are different uh, ways and we need to, each one of us needs to see, okay, how does it work with my schedule? Because time is very much precious. Uh, but you always, you know, you start with building this small group of people. So I have people that I met uh, once we moved here uh, at the, the German classes, we are friends now. So we are, we are friends, we, we maintain our contacts and uh, you know, we, we travel together. Uh, we travel to Spain for the first time, they travel to Bosnia and Herzegovina for the first time. So you, know, you have to have this, this idea that it's important. So the first is also setting the, you know, the, the mindset about it. It's, I want to have a strong, network around me. So it's, it's important for me, not just professionally, but as well, you know, privately. So I'm, I'm a very, very social person. And all the, the, the jobs that I'm doing in, in uh, now and, and years before was, are related to people. So, and through people, you get information from the market, you get new ideas, insights. So it's not just about, you know, number of contacts, but it's about you uh, having a strong network that provides, feeds your news feed every day. It's like, okay, how about that idea? So I think it started back in, the, uh, back in, in, in those days and it continued when, when I moved between the jobs. So it's just um, kept growing because I moved to a larger company, larger division. And from there I was uh, in contact with more and more and more people. And as well, um, I just have the thing for it. You know, it's, it's something in, in my family and, and it, I was always surrounded by people. I don't remember a day when I was basically, when there wasn't something happening at, at our home. And um, I think uh, three years ago, when I started uh, thinking about uh, my MBA, uh, to do my MBA. So I, the reason um, was, of course, you know, to grow professionally, but as well, I said to myself, look, I have a very strong international network due to my job, but I am lacking uh, a network, a good network here in this area. So the Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. So what, how can I, you know, make it happen. So I, how can I change that? Because I, I want to stay in Austria. I will be working from here. Maybe we will move somewhere. But for now, it's very important to build a stable network. And as you said, feel at home here. And that's where MBA helped 
enormously, basically, because I got the chance to meet in my cohort over hundreds of uh, people, so ambitious people, business uh, professionals. So imagine 100 people, 100 companies, 100 ideas. So this is, and I said to myself, so um, I cannot meet so many people, but how can I? It's always about you know, growth, as you said, exponential growth. So how can you uh, use your time in the best way so that you really scale? And uh, that's where MBA came in and my network then, then grew, grew really, really fast uh, due to my peers and due to the alumni, because all these MBAs have their alumni and there are like over 5,000 of people worldwide. So imagine how much, uh, I, how much can you get, get from there and they from you, because networking is giving, giving, giving and taking. Um, and I think it was last year uh, and it came together with my, uh, with my mission, impacting 1,000 women, uh, so that I started uh, really uh, strategically, even more strategically going deeper and rethinking, okay, so what do I do with all this? You know, so how can I make the best of, of it? How can I continue providing value to my network and I get the value from them, basically? It, for me, it doesn't make sense to have contacts and sit on them. So networking is not all is good for me and all it works for me and I'm sitting on hundreds of great contacts and so on, but I'm not giving it to anyone. So it's about, you know, thinking, okay, because if you're in the middle and you're providing the value, so people, people get uh, to introduce someone else through you and this is the value or you see something interesting or uh, an article or a book or, and you know that you know, my friend Sam would like to know more about it because that's his topic. So it's always staying basically uh, in touch uh, and, and keeping providing the value and uh, you will automatically receive the value through that. So it's not about setting the mind that, okay, what do I get from it? But it's about really how can you uh, serve the community and as you mentioned yourself, uh, one uh, on top, uh, I'm a part of the Female Leaders Network. So it's, it's a very powerful community here. Uh, grew up here from Austria, but we have our community worldwide. And of course that helped a lot. So if there's one thing that you can do as well for, for, your, for people who are listening, this is as well get engaged into one or the other community that is already there. So we build up this, this one because we felt okay we are missing this so we have our alumni club but we are missing this part this uh important part of the puzzle because these are the place where we talk about topics that are on our table now and that are so important to us like career and, and family mental health uh, networking and so on entrepreneurship of course so uh, it helps very much if you, it can help you tremendously if you join one or the other community. And especially nowadays, since everything is online, it's so easy to, uh, to get uh, you know, involved, to join one or the other session, uh, to meet new people, to just you know, go out there, or maybe you have some ideas. It's not always about, you know, I have a goal in mind, so I... I I go to a networking and I just, I want to meet like 50 people or five people. Or, so it's good to have a goal in, in overall goal, but you have to have fun as well with it. So if you are going somewhere, it should be value for you. You should have fun. And with all that, I think you will, um, you know, and keep coming back. So I would say keep coming back because with one networking event, it's, you will meet most probably two, three, four, five people. Out of those five people, you will say, okay, there's, there's this one person that I really enjoy talking to. I want to have a follow-up. Uh, I want to have a follow-up. I want to have a go for a coffee, a lunch, and so on. So I want to go deeper. And I think that's, that's important. So just con continue. This, this consistency is everywhere in everything that we do. So you can keep good coming back and you keep following up. I think that's, that's so, so important that if you and I talk today and, and I tell you, okay, I'm interested in this and you tell me, okay, I, I really need a contact from, I'm building up whatever this, this offer I have and I want to talk to this person from this community, can you introduce me? Then it's on me to introduce you to this community and not forget about it and disappear and so on. So it's, it's, 
you're putting your name, your face, your uh, people, uh, you're accountable for it. And people will, you know, especially at the beginning. So when you start building your network, uh, it's not about how many, it's not about, you know, how many business cards. It's about, you know, that people, um, that you leave a good impression uh, and that people see, okay, she's here because she really believes into it. She wants to do something or she's here to provide the value and she's, you know, good, good person nice to talk to brings new ideas and so on and then it it's it's um it starts the it goes from there basically and sometimes you really don't know where uh, where the journey is going to take you i have so many people in my network that are recommended me everywhere uh for like when i when i started now with this with my mission they recommended me everywhere so we, we didn't do any business together, but it's not always about you know, uh, business together. It's about you want to have people. You, firstly, I, own, I go for a coffee with people that I really want to go for a coffee. So if I don't want to spend my time, you know, just, you know, maintaining or entertaining someone and so on. So it has to be, you know, you have to feel it both ways. So it's not about, yeah, I'm feeding someone else with information and I feel that person is not responding at all and so on. So, you know, it has to be, it has to be both ways. It has to be really both ways and you have to enjoy that and uh, keep coming back and set yourself some, like say, okay, uh, it's, it's like for 90 days. I want to try it for 90 days as, as our coach Dario will say. And if I may, one more thing to add to that. So I, uh, last week I, I told about that every week I do two virtual coffees uh, with, uh, uh, with new people new people in my network. And I didn't know where this is going to lead. I just, you know, I, I create weekly content on networking and I posted it. And my friend, and who as well is a very good networker and she has her own community and, and full-time job and so on and so forth. And she really liked the idea. Yeah, you know, she was like, oh, I didn't think about that. Because when people think about networking, it's like, okay, days and hours, months and, and years of, you know, and it's like, there's this big picture, big cloud, it's like, and then you feel overwhelmed and it's like, okay, I'm not going, I'm not going there. It's, it's nice, it's, it feels good and I see the value and so on. And I said about, you know, starting with um, two coffees, you know, 8.30 to 9, depending on your schedule, to meet new people. And today she posted me, a, she, she sent me a picture. It's like, oh, I, I give it a try. It's so amazing. And I'm finally, you know, I'm finally putting this topic in front of me and saying, okay, I'm finally doing something about it. Because we all say we are going to, we want to meet new people. We all say that we believe how important networking is for your job, for your career, professionally and privately and so on. We all know that. So there's like books and books written about it, uh, webinars and so on. And we, we believe in that in, in ourselves, but it's about, you know, starting from somewhere, you know, starting from, you know, uh, meeting two people in your network. It's, it starts with, you know, downloading the LinkedIn app or it starts with 15 minutes a, a day. I say start with 15 minutes a day. So you don't, don't go like for, uh, like binge watching Netflix for like three hours on LinkedIn, then it just, you're overwhelmed and you just, ah, okay, no one is responding to me and so on. So it starts with 15 minutes, get engaged uh, with people. So people love to, if, if there, there are some common interests that you have with people, just, you know, engage in their content, basically. That's so, so powerful to engage in other people's uh, co uh, comments, contacts, um, and, People will start noticing. You will see very soon that you uh, get very much traction because you are providing the value yourself. I can tell it's a topic you're really passionate about. I love how much you shared both online and offline. It was sort of a mixture between going to networking events offline and then online it's engaging with people's comments and also doing virtual coffees which is a fantastic idea i love that uh, especially nowadays so many things are virtual and online it's so nice to have coffees online and it was also really interesting how you shared it was both a mindset and also strategy and i think that applies to most areas in life it's mindset and strategy for pretty much everything I loved what you said about the importance of following up and being accountable. And if you say you'll give someone a contact or a piece of information, then you follow up. 
what systems do you have to keep track of this? Because there's obviously a lot of people you're networking with, a lot of things that you might promise or think of. How do you manage to keep track? So I'm not there where I want to be. Uh, so uh, it's, it's all done by myself. So I, I, I love, so this will be always basically in some ways or shapes done by me. So I would love to stay in touch with people and talk to them. Uh, but what you can do, the easiest what I do, after every of this call, I, I add five minutes, top 10 minutes. And after when I close this call, I do it. So if, for instance, last week I was talking to Lisa and she has some fantastic idea about um, uh, she does educational books for STEM in, in the STEM area for the kids. So like uh, four to eight years. And we, were, we had a chat, like half an hour chat, coffee. And she was telling me what, she, what they are doing, so how the business started and so on. And I was thinking, okay, a few I was thinking about few people that I could connect her with. So I was saying, okay, maybe women in tech community would be interested because you know, it's, it's a powerful community, it's, it's uh, worldwide. Uh, maybe there's a way how you can collaborate together and provide value both sides. And basically just after that call, uh, so when the call was over, um, I went on, on LinkedIn, mostly I connect people through LinkedIn messaging um, because I, most of my contacts come through, through LinkedIn. So I basically went there and I wrote, I connected uh, Lisa with Anna and I just said, okay, look, it's, it's good to do a little introduction. So like, hi, Anna, I yeah, hope you're doing well. So I talked to Lisa, this, this is amazing idea what she's doing, uh, what you guys are doing, she, she already knows and she knows the community. I think it would be really good if you could, you know, have a chat and talk to each other or, or, or if you could give her you know some context within the network and basically that was it so i you know they connected they got the mutual contacts uh, so anna loved the idea and so that's where it goes from there basically so i think it's it's so important to if you say okay i will do it for a half an hour then and then plan please like this this five minutes or ten minutes uh, or no matter how much you need and just you know do that part I like to do it just after the call. You can do it, you know, at the end of the day or the, the, the next day, but it's, it's pref depending on your, on your preferences on, on your time. But I I'm the kind of person that likes, you know, I have it in my head. I sit, I type it down, I set it out and I, I feel really good that I know, okay, uh, it's done. I don't have to, you know, carry it with me during the day. Think, oh, what did I say? Oh, uh, I'm not, I don't want to forget it. I want to forget it. But, um, Going forward, there will be definitely more tools, more different tools that I will be uh, using how to even optimize that and how to make it more, more automated. And, but at the moment, it's very much through, through LinkedIn messaging that, that I'm doing it because it, it helps you to go back. So that, that's, a, that's a really good thing. Every time you go back and every time I type uh, Katie or Anna, I see all the communication that we had and say, oh, okay, maybe we haven't talked for three months. I should, I should send her you know, how, ask her how does she feel and how's the business and so on. This is such a valuable piece of information in terms of being proactive directly and immediately. I think once more that this can be applied to many different areas, because like you said, if you're proactive immediately, then you don't carry this in yes. your mind and it doesn't weigh you down. So it clears up that mental space. Plus it's really satisfying. Yes. So when you do it on the moment, you're energized, you've just spoken with the person, you're excited about the next steps. So it's great to just do it immediately. Are there any struggles that you've had in terms of networking where you've really felt that it has been challenging for you or difficult maybe when you first arrived? Uh, my my <clears throat> very first experiences with, um, <clears throat> let me get some water. <clears throat> I usually share the story of, <clears throat> sorry, I usually share the stories of my first days, days of networking when I did it, everything wrong. So I think it's, uh, it's good now when I feel like comfortable and talk to, to new people. But at the beginning, uh, I think there was, a, there was a big event. So where, where in the company that I was working, we have this, we have this annual event, like every company now. Uh, and we invited all our customers and, and partners and, and so on. And the whole executive team w was there. And basically, since I was just, I joined the company and I was new in the team uh, together with 
couple of my colleagues. So they told us, yeah, tonight is, an, uh, tonight is the event. So, you know, let's go. Basically, it was after work. Let's go for, for the networking and there will be some uh, uh, people there. That's the first, <laughs> that's the, well, that was the first, you know, the, should be a question mark, like, where are we going? Who are we meeting? Think what is expected from us, and this is the thing that you uh, as well for for the networking. Wherever you go, so where are you going? Who are you going to meet? Who do you want to meet? Because you, maybe you want to meet this specific speaker or this specific person, and uh, so a little bit to to prepare yourself here because you, you feel much better uh, when you're like, oh, okay, I know where I'm going. I know who I'm going to meet. So basically, we went there. And it was a big disaster. It was a big fiasco. I remember the day after I had my uh, talk with my, uh, with my mentor and supervisor back then. And he told us, that I cannot thank him enough because he told us that was a disaster. That was a pure disaster because when we arrived there, so that, you know, we had these nice tables and people were sitting and, and chatting and having dinner. I remember I spent most of my time with, uh, with my colleagues and with one customer. You know, it's, it was like, okay. And there was a uh, hundred more customers and, and people that I could talk to. And basically I, I didn't feel uh, comfortable. I was like, okay, I'm new here. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. You know, who wants to hear what I have to say? And, and my German is, was like good enough, but you know, it's native for them. So, and, and it, was, it felt so comfortable to basically to sit at one, at one place and talk to people that you already know and that you feel comfortable. This is the second thing that you shouldn't be doing because, uh, you know, it's not a competition. When you go out and at the networking event, it's not, I'm not competing with anyone. So basically I feel comfortable in who I am and I am bringing, uh, this is my story or this is the expertise that I have or this is the company that I work with. That's it. Like people that I'm, uh, like all other people that I meet. So there's, I'm not competing with anyone. So I, I'm telling, I'm sharing my experience and my stories and this is the power of it. Basically, I'm not, it, it should be understood in, the, in that way. So I'm, I'm going there, I'm going to, you know, learn something or I'm going to meet new people. There's a value for me. And it's important, so the, the, you know, it's, it's, it's tough at the beginning. It's really because you feel all this, you feel like everyone is watching you. So everyone is watching like, oh, whatever I say or whatever I do is like, it's going to be, oh my God. And then you have your you know, supervisors and executive teams looking there and the important customers and maybe you say something wrong or whatever. So when you go to the networking events, it's important, you know, uh, to, it's good to prepare, it's, it would be good to prepare yourself a little bit as well mentally. So it's not just like physically, yes, but as well mentally, okay, I'm going there and like play it in your head, basically. I like to play it in my head a little bit, visualize, okay, where I'm going to meet, where, how, what do I want to achieve and so on and so forth. And once you are there, you know, move. You know, it's always good, good to move and I like, um, as I said, I don't go corners and I don't go buffets. <laughs> so I'm not going to stand the whole time in the buffet or the whole time in the corner. It's always good to be kind of in the middle of, uh, middle of the room and just, you know, talk to the next, next person next to you. So basically, people who are there, uh, in most cases, some of them, so, you know, you will have all, probably 20% who feel really comfortable and everybody else feels a little, little bit uncomfortable because nowadays as well, after years and years of practice, I, you know, you meet new person, you know, you have to, you're presenting yourself every time new and then it's, it's you, you get, every time you do it, you do it often, you practice, you get more comfortable. So keep, keep talking to people. And what I like to say as well, it's helpful to you know, say, okay, maximize it to 10 minutes. You, know, you don't spend uh, you know, hours talking to, to one, uh, one person uh, because you know, this other person as well is here to uh, meet other people and connect to other people. So you know, if you like this, this person, you know, say, okay, let's continue our conversation. You exchange the, the cards, contacts, and you say, okay, let's you know, follow up. I will send you an email or whatever. I will send you this. So, and afterwards, it's good to reflect, basically. So that, that was before, during, and after. Uh, for me, the reflection was done through, through my manager, uh, previous manager, who said, okay, th that was a pure disaster, and uh, that's not how you do it. And for yourself, so you can as well do this uh, when you come home and say, okay, when you go through the cards and, and 
it's always good to note on the cards. You can always note the things that were specific to this person, football, dogs, uh, I don't know, IoT, whatever, networking and so on. So you have this. So my, every card of mine has something on it, basically, or either maybe event that we met at, I don't know, Women Tech or Web Summit or whatever. So when I go through it, I can remember and then maybe I will write this person and be like, okay, we didn't talk to each other for a long time. And so the after is this reflection is, is so important. So basically really, really important for you uh, to sit with yourself and say, okay, I met these five people. What did we agree? What, 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 is, the, what is the next step? Who I really want to talk to next time? Have I connected them on, on LinkedIn? Have I sent a message? And then, then. And oh, yeah, maybe something went really well. So, okay, maybe if I'm there, for instance, 15 minutes before the event, maybe that's really helpful. Because if you are there a bit earlier uh, in, during the event, you, you get you know, to meet the people, you get to meet the organizers, you, know, you get the feeling of the space. And it's like, okay, I know I, I would like to sit there. And, I would do, uh, and you meet one or the other people usually who are there earlier as you are. So you have a chance to talk to. And, and. so there, there, are a couple of, there are a couple of things that you, that you can do. But it's, it's about, it starts from you basically, if you feel uh, with yourself at home, so that's why I'm saying, you know, get some sleep before, don't do five events at a day because it's, it's, it's talking 10 hours, 15 hours with people, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. Uh, so, and get into the habit, you know, going, going out and, 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 and meeting people. And every time you do that, it's, it, feel, it feels more and more and more natural and more and more, you, you feel comfortable. So practice, Practice, practice makes it makes it perfect. So now I can go and talk to you know anyone. So after years and years, but before of that, it was like, oh, please don't don't look at me. And especially you and I, so women in tech. So we, I go to most of the events where I'm the only woman, or like maybe there's another one. And then you feel as well, you know, like, oh, you know, people are watching. Are they watching me? Most of the time. So I people are busy with themselves, honestly. So most of the time, I start, I'm talking from, starting from myself. If I stare at somewhere, I, I'm thinking about maybe, okay, what's the next I have to do? Or maybe I forgot this or who I should have to go. So it's, it, it's good to go a little bit um, through that a little, with a little bit of ease to not put too much pressure on yourself. And uh, we will do mistakes and we will do, uh, I did so many, uh, so many of, of, of these mistakes at, at the beginning, as I told you. But I liked in, in this book that I'm reading at the moment, it's called Never, Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. And he says uh, one thing, it's very powerful. Invisibility is, the, is much worse than a failure. So that, and that's, in, that's everywhere. So in, in professional life, if you're in a company and no one knows you, for you, it's better that they know you for three projects that failed then they don't know you at all. So at least you tried something. And it's the same applies for the events. So if you, uh, or, or uh, if you're invisible on, on LinkedIn, on any other network, so you're there, but you're invisible, you know, it's what's, what's the point? It's better to, you know, uh, share something and, you know, do something and it's like, okay, oh, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I, next time I'll do it better. It's better to be uh, visible, do failure, then it could be completely in, in, invisible because people then don't know how to uh, approach you with which topics, how to address the topics and so on. So, yeah. I love that quote. I think that's I think really, that's really nice. Enough. No, I think that's a really nice quote. And I loved what you said about when you're in a networking event and you just sort of stay with the same group of people. I know I have done this. It's very easy to fall into a conversation yes. and the whole evening goes by and you think, oh, well, that was nice, but I didn't get to meet anyone else. And I could have just seen this person separately on a coffee. You say shared so many, so many powerful insights. Just before finishing this episode, where can people find you? So... On LinkedIn, as I was saying, so one of the things where you can always find me on LinkedIn. So I post regularly every week uh, about networking. So mostly through all the questions that I get uh, from people, because when that's the point, when you meet people, so there, there are always questions. So you're getting so many insights and ideas and I get, oh, okay, can I try this? Or would that work for me? Would that work for the, for the community? So this is one of the things that they can definitely 
where they can find me. And I recently started um, uh, my li a little project, uh, a little so a YouTube channel uh, called Making It in Austria. So how to start your career in Austria, where I invite uh, invite people so that. Um, moved abroad, came to Austria. Some of them started fr from scratch. Some of them had, had a job. And then we basically tried to demystify all these um, ideas that are about moving abroad. So how do you do it? How do you, you know, how do you prepare your best for that? What are the things that you can do upfront before you uh, land here, before you quit your job and, and uh, land uh, here in, in Austria? How important is German? Which communities would they recommend? So how, how did these people, basically that went through a very similar uh, journey like myself um, how did they find their ways and how how did they find a way to feel like at home basically here here in Austria that they say okay I really feel good here my I have my business here my, my uh, privately and professionally because privately is so important as much as professional so because if you you want to have people around if you want to have your basically your community you want to have, you want to have friends you want to feel like when you go walking through the streets you say I, I really feel I feel well here and I have people that I can um, talk to and so we talk about uh, we talk about all of that so I'm, I'm really excited that, about that little uh, small project and let's see where does it where does it take us Wonderful. I'll put it all in the show notes. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining Adele. It was wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, everyone. And um, keep in touch.